gorgeous snake. Oh, do you want to come sit on my hand? Look at that, folks. You can see these animals, once again, super calm. Super calm when they're respected, when they're given the space that they deserve, that they should be given. She's quickly becoming one of my favorite snakes I've been able to show you all um, today. She's just behaving so well. Cotton mouths. Now these heavy-bodied pit vipers are the target of wives' tales and ignorance throughout their natural range. Seemingly everyone has had some type of run-in with what they believe to be a bloodthirsty, venomous reptile. Now, cottonmouths get their name from the bright white inside of their mouths that they flash open to startle predators and give them a chance to flee. Now, this defense mechanism is often misinterpreted by people who believe this snake is attempting to bite at the first sign of danger. This is almost never the case. In my experience, almost every cottonmouth I've ever encountered has completely mellowed out in just a few minutes of being in my presence. These animals sense they aren't in any real danger and don't feel the need to defend themselves. Don't believe me? Let's see if we can find one of these beautiful snakes, and maybe you'll see. All right, everybody, welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife. Now, as I'm sure you can all see behind me, it's a beautiful, swampy, creaky forest. And today I'm going to be kind of poking around looking for a very special type of snake. Today I'm hoping to show you the Florida cottonmouth, or at least an intergrade between the Florida and the northern cottonmouth. Now these cottonmouths, in my opinion, are some of the most beautiful snakes native to North America, and easily one of the most beautiful pit vipers here in the Panhandle area of Florida. So we're gonna poke around, and hopefully we can find one or maybe more of these beautiful, beautiful snakes. Let's go. All right, now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be kind of checking the roots and the banks and, and trying to see if there's any little nooks and crannies where these snakes are gonna be hanging out. Now you can see this is a beautiful winding sandy creek. It should be full of all sorts of frogs and tadpoles and fish and a whole host of things that these beautiful snakes are gonna be feeding on. So I'm really hopeful this is an amazing area. It's a nice day. It's not too hot under these trees. So there should be some activity from these snakes and hopefully we could find one to show you all at home. But it is just, I mean, a gorgeous, gorgeous habitat. Oh, I can't get enough. Oh, no way. Oh, beautiful juvenile cottonmouth. Come take a look, folks. Look at this. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Love that high contrast of these beautiful snakes. Come here. Try and get a hold of its tail so we can take a look at that beautiful snake. Oh, look at this. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Florida cottonmouth. Oh. Now this animal is perfectly at home in this swampy environment. This is a perfect place for all sorts of frogs and lizards and even other snakes and turtles. These animals have been known to even feed on turtles. They're pretty, uh, pretty uh, predatory and really anything that's little that they can really fit in their maw, uh, they will go for and try and eat. Wow, look at those ventral scales. This is a gorgeous snake. This is actually one of the most beautiful cottonmouths I've ever seen. Beautiful kind of almost burgundy undertones and fairly calm. 
not too terribly defensive. Look at you. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to see that beautiful cotton mouth, this animal's namesake white mouth that they use and they gape for defense today. But what a spectacular animal. And we're just getting devoured by mosquitoes and flies. But a gorgeous snake like this just always makes it worth it. Wow. Now, a lot of people believe a lot of myths about these super beautiful and awesome pit vipers. Uh, one of the main ones I hear is that cotton mouths chase people. Uh, now, pretty much 99% of the time, I am positive that what is happening is that these people are misinterpreting this animal's behavior. You saw that once this animal was spotted, its first instinct was to flee, to look for cover, to look for something to hide under. A lot of times people don't recognize that these snakes are actually trying to get away. Now, like many snakes, these snakes are equipped with heat sensing pits. So they, they're not really relying on just their eyesight all the time for navigation. So sometimes these snakes can get confused of in sorts. They can, they can look for shadow, they can look for something big to hide under. And a lot of times they might get disoriented and head towards a person because they think that that's shelter, that perhaps it's a tree that they can hide under. And people are misinterpreting that behavior, thinking that these animals are chasing after them, ready to just ah, bite and devour them. But of course, you can see this animal is perfectly calm. Now that I have her restrained, she realizes, hey, I'm not about to be eaten. I'm not about to be devoured. This isn't so bad. And she's just perfectly content to sit calmly and nice and relaxed until she's ready to get back on her way. Another great example of a myth around cottonmouths and really most venomous snakes is that the babies are quote unquote more poisonous or more venomous than the adults. This in fact is not true. Now this comes in part due to some species of snakes usually not fully learning how much venom it takes to fully subdue their prey. What I mean by that is as these animals get older, they used to they they learn to conserve their venom. And what I mean by that is these animals can say, "Hey, I'm I'm hunting a bullfrog per se. I know pretty much exactly the amount of venom that it takes to take out a bullfrog. I'm not going to use any more or any less than that." Because these animals, their venom is a precious resource. It's how they defend themselves. It's how they hunt for food. So these animals learn as they grow how to conserve their venom. So as babies, sometimes that strategy is not fully honed in on yet. And these animals can inject their full tank in a defensive bite or, or as a predatory bite. So that has led to the myth that some of these animals are just so much more toxic than the parents. But that's not true. It's the exact same toxicity. And in fact, look at the size of this guy. This guy can't inject near nearly the amount of just a small portion of an adult's venom glands worth of venom. So that, that once again, complete and total myth. That is a lie. So that is something I'm passionate about on Jack's World of Wildlife, which is to educate you and to dispel those myths that surround such beautiful and spectacular creatures. You got some mud on your eyes. Here, let's see if we can get some of that mud off. But look at that gorgeous snake. Oh, you want to come sit on my hand? Look at that, folks. You can see these animals, once again, super calm. Super calm when they're respected, when they're given the space that they deserve, that they should be given. Look at that. Oh, such a cool snake. Now, it's important to note, of course, don't try this at home. I've been working with snakes for many, many, many years. I know what to look for when this animal starts to get agitated. And as you can see, she's quite calm. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous snake. I wish you didn't have all that mud on your eye. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous little Florida cottonmouth. These are the types of interactions I live for. Just an animal. Oh, she's looking over at the camera, trying to figure out what's going on. Look at that. Spectacular animal. Oh, too cool. Wow, 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 wow. Again, like I said, don't try this at home. Because uh, even a bite from an animal this size could prove pretty gnarly. It's not going to be life-threatening at this stage, but it's going to ruin your week for sure. You could see some pretty serious necrosis, some tissue damage, um, and all sorts of nasty gangrenous kind of blisters and things. Let's get that mud. Oh, did I get it? Almost. 
haven't got it enough. Oh, such a gorgeous animal. Take a look. She just got those beautiful kind of copper undertones. Spectacular animal. I just love, love, love snakes. Love them if you can't tell. Come here. You're getting all tangled up in me. Oh, gorgeous snake. Oh, beautiful, look at that. Oh, I just love the contrast on these snakes. They're just got such amazing colors. Nothing, nothing on our poor uh, northern cottonmouths, uh, but these Floridas just, just always manage to blow me out of the water. They just got some beautiful copper undertones and things like that. Absolutely spectacular snakes. Wow, wow. Well, we're gonna get some footage on the good camera of this beauty because uh, she's quickly becoming one of my favorite snakes I've been able to show you all um, today. She's just behaving so well. So we're gonna set her down and try and get some footage of her. But once again, take a look. Not the monsters that everybody makes them out to be, um, but definitely an animal that should be respected and uh, should be treated as a valuable part of any ecosystem. Oh, too cool. Now, you may not realize it, but the cottonmouth is actually one of the most unique snakes on Earth. And what I mean by that is these are the only pit vipers that have completely adapted to an aquatic lifestyle. That means that these are one of the few special aquatic venomous snakes and the only viper that spends the majority of its life under or around or in water. And that is just so cool that we have something so special and so unique. And that's why I'm always trying to just open people's eyes to seeing that you don't have to like these animals, but you can certainly respect them and respect the special niche that they fill in their respective ecosystems. These are just some of the coolest snakes out there. All right, folks, we've had a wonderful and cherished time with this absolute marvel of a snake. You've done so well. Let's give her a little kiss. <sighs> Amazing. A little kiss for a little cotton. She behaved so wonderfully. And this is actually my first tiny, tiny juvenile Florida cottonmouth I've ever seen. Uh, so this was an extra special moment for me as well, as I'm sure it was for you. So we thank her. She's been an amazing ambassador for her species, once again, helping me dispel the myths that these are bloodthirsty, venomous monsters out to bite you whenever they find you, out to chase you down, out to bite everyone you love, everyone you care about. These are just animals, and it's important that we respect them and we give them their space. Once again, I'll reiterate, don't try this at home, although this one was very calm. There are more defensive cottonmouths that, when grabbed, handled, or attempted to be killed, will, of course, defend themselves as they perceive you as a threat. Uh, it may not look it. It may look like I'm just risking life and limb, uh, but uh, I would only handle this animal if she was if she was behaving in a way that I knew that I could handle her uh, safely. So this uh, this was an amazing experience, a wonderful, wonderful time, and uh, let's see what else we can find today. But I think our time with the Florida cotton is done, and uh, I couldn't be more happy with it. One last look, beautiful snake. Wow. All right, beauty, come on down. Right back where we found you. Oh. <laughs> Too cool, love that.